reigning champions. Thank you, worship team. Praise God. Greet someone beside you. Happy New Year. And please be happy. Smile. <laughs> Praise God. Well, good to see all of you today. Amen. Are you cold enough? <laughs> I think somebody was dreaming of a white Christmas. And so that's what we got <laughs> all throughout the, the Christmas holidays. Well, I trust that you had a wonderful Christmas holidays uh, with family and friends and you were able to take time as a family together to just bond together and enjoy one another. Now I can't believe that today is the last day of 2017. Now are you excited for the new year? Look at that, it's now 2018 over here. Wow, wonderful. Thank you so much for all those that have been preparing it. And, uh, um, you know, I, I encourage you to be a part of the celebration tonight. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Be a part because it's so much that we're going to be doing this evening and great things that we're expecting and the declarations for the coming year. Wow. So in just a few hours, we will welcome the new year 2018. Now, things just went too fast. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm overwhelmed with all of the greetings and, you know, with the social media now. You know, I, I can't keep up with all of the greetings and all the things in the messenger. <laughs> I'm trying to keep up with everybody. So, forgive me if I've not been able to reply to some of you. I just want to thank you for all of your greetings, whether you sent it by a card or you gave it or by messenger or Facebook, whatever it is, you know, I thank you for uh, your greetings. And uh, it's just, I'm just overwhelmed with all of the, the, the greetings that we're getting, especially now with the social media that, we're, that allows us to be able to greet people around the world in just like this, you know. So praise God. Anyway, um, as we uh, enter into this new year, this 2017 will be just memories. And I trust that you have good memories of 2017. Amen? It's quiet over here. Wow, are you? <laughs> I trust that you have those good memories, okay? Now, as a church, let me take a moment uh, just to share with you some of the great memories that we've had, to share with you some main highlights of the year that we've had. And um, when we began the year, we declared advance. And we have seen uh, the manifestation of that. There's many things that the Lord has done through us uh, this past year. First of all, we have been able to conduct five lead school equipping. You know, four part-time and one full-time. You know, the one in July. And uh, we graduated 171 sons in the kingdom of God, who are demonstrating the kingdom principles in our centers, including Trinidad and Philippines. Now, we have ordained three next generation pastors. Uh, amen. And included several sons as observers in our governmental leadership teams uh, throughout the centers. We have established the Champion Life Network in Trinidad in Milan, Italy, in Yokohama, Japan, in Ghana, Africa. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now, we have also uh, established partnership with Grace and Truth Church in Korea. Yeah. And even hired one of their pastors to be on staff, Pastor Jay Cho over there. The son of the founder and senior pastor himself, Yong Mok Cho. Praise God. We celebrated also our 25th anniversary with a bang last year. Amen. Thanks to our many sons who labored to make it a success. Well, there are many other things that have happened that we don't have time to just share, but all the glory belongs to the Lord. Come on, let's give him praise right now. Thank you, Jesus, for what you have done in past 2017. Let's pray to the Lord. Father, 
we come to you this morning and we are so grateful for what you have done in this past 2017. Lord God, how you have moved upon us and Lord God, you have uh, continued to anoint us and encourage us and strengthen us throughout this year. We thank you for your blessings, your provision in everything that you have done throughout the year. Lord, we are mindful of the fact that we can't do anything without you. And so we are just so grateful for your love, for your grace, and your mercy upon our lives. And so today, Lord, as we um, look back and reflect on the things that you have done uh, in the past year, we're also thinking about the great things that are ahead, what you will be doing in this coming year. And so today, Lord, we open now our hearts and our minds to you, that, Lord, you will speak into our lives about what you would have us do in this coming year. And so we commit this time to you now. Have your way in our midst. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So friends, we are now entering a brand new year in just a few hours. Now, we have a clean slate. Think about that. You have a, a new whiteboard that you can begin to write new things on it. You have a new beginning. We have the opportunity to create new experiences and new things to explore, new dreams to pursue, um, new heights to soar, and new mountains to conquer, new relationships to establish. Amen? You know, there are many things that we could be doing in this coming year. So as I prayed about our theme for this coming year, the Lord impressed upon me to continue on our journey of carrying on our legacy. Now, we began that, we launched that in October during our anniversary. But I believe that there's still so much more that we need to do to establish our legacy. So let us be the legacy carriers, obeying God's will as this year comes. I believe God's hand is upon champion life as a church. And he's ready to pour out his anointing and propel us into his God-given destiny. And as we enter into a new year in 2018. Are you excited about that? Yeah. Do you know that you, you, you actually get what you expect? If you expect nothing, nothing happens. But when you expect great things, God will even do above and more than you'd ever expect. That's what the Bible says. He will do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or imagine. If you imagine things, then God does bigger than what you imagine. But if you don't imagine anything, God can't do anything. <laughs> Are you hearing me today? And so as we mature in our walk with Christ, the more we realize that we belong to a family of God. You know, as we mature, our individual lives and our families are connected to the family of God, which we call the church. We are all together as one, as a church. The Lord has a divine plan, not only for ourselves as individuals, but for the whole church. Throughout history, God had a divine destiny for his children. You read the pages of the Bible, you see the whole nation of Israel. God was concerned not about one individual or one family. Yes, he used people, but he was concerned about the whole family of God, the whole nation. When he wanted to reach, uh, he wanted them to reach the promised land, it was for the whole nation. It wasn't for one person. It was the whole nation that, wa that, that God wanted to enter into the promised land, not just a selected family. So as we, con as we are connected to the family of God, fulfilling our divine destiny, we will experience the blessings of God. Amen? Tell the person beside you, get connected. Amen? The more that we realize that as children of God, we need to be connected to the family of God. Because if we're disconnected as sons, we, we don't receive the blessings through that family. Are you hearing me? Because we are the family of God. If you try to do things on your own as your own family, which some people do, they try to think, oh, I can just have my own thing, just me and God. God doesn't do it that way. God looks at the church as the family of God. 
And as we are connected to the family of God, he has a divine destiny for the whole church, for the whole family. And if you're connected to that, the blessings flow in your life. Are you hearing it? So remember that as we, as we go into this coming year. And friends, your divine destiny is not in the distant future. Your divine destiny begins now. Right now, God has a plan for you. From the time you were born, God already knew what he wanted for you and where he wants you to go. God called you and I to be a legacy carrier, to carry his, his uh, uh, DNA, to, to carry uh, his blessings, to carry uh, his, his heart, his passion. God called you to be a legacy carrier. Now, let me ask you a question. Where are you headed in this coming new year? Where are you headed in 2018? Are you going in the direction that God has already laid out for you to be a legacy carrier? Or you're still trying to figure that out? Now, let me, let me just put it this way. Have you ever gone into your car and just drove anywhere? I mean, you know, that would be, I hope not. I mean, that, that, is a, that, that is calling for an accident. Just trying to get in there and just drive. You don't know where you're going. You know, see, because when you get in the car, you basically have a destination in mind. You, you, you know where you're going to go. You don't want to just go in there and start driving and, 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 you know, turn wherever. No, you're going to an accident. But if you had a direction in mind, a destination in mind, you plan your way out. Just from the parking lot, you already know where you're going to go, where you're going to turn left or right, because you have a destination in mind. In our spiritual life, we must also know where we are going. You see, there are many people today who get up, they go to work, they go home, they go to bed, they get up to go to work, to go home and get to bed, and then get up to go to work. I mean, that's the same thing, routine over and over and over. And they have no idea where they're going. Are you hearing me today? And they just have no idea. They are just in a routine of every single day, just going through the motions. But they don't know where they are going. They coast through life without understanding their destiny. They don't know what their purpose is. They don't know what they are going to do. So they just keep going and going. And you wonder one year later, two years later, what have you accomplished? Now maybe uh, to, to some people, all it is is just about maybe an increase every year in your paycheck. Is that what it is about? You know, maybe all, all, you're waiting for an increase in your paycheck or maybe a better job. And, and so you get a new promotion. Then what? What about five years from now? You just got a better job. Maybe you just got a better money. You just have more things, to, more stuff in your home. But what have you accomplished for the kingdom of God? How many disciples have you made? How many churches have you been a part of that you've established? How many uh, things that you've expanded for the kingdom of God? How many mission trips have you gone to? How many things have you done for the poor? And how many things have you done for the community to help them to make it a better place to live? What impact have we done in our lives? So really, that's something we need to think about. Because our destiny is not just to have a better paycheck. Our destiny is not just to have an increase in pay, a better job so that we can have more stuff that we can put in our homes. Are you hearing me today? The world has no idea of their destiny because it is spiritually discerned. If you are not in tune with the Spirit of God, you will not know. You will not know. You will just keep doing what everybody, uh, everybody else is doing. And there are also, and sadly, there are also Christians who do not know because they're not in tune with the Spirit of God. It's like having a radio and you're in the wrong channel. God is speaking to, you know... Uh, Channel 333, and you're on 789, and he's speaking to you, and you can't hear him. You're on the wrong channel. And you see, 
even though we may be believers, we may be Christians, but if we're not in tune and aligned to what God is saying, then we are missing what he has for us. Amen? God's desire is that you and I will walk in our divine destiny. Here's what the Apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. It said this, Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Only, verse 16, um, it says in verse 16, only let us live up to what we have already attained. You see, friends, God wants us to live up to what we have already attained, to live up to what God has for us. There is a call to forget what is behind and to rise above to the calling of God and live up to it. There are too many Christians who have stayed in the realm of the average, thinking this is what God wants. Paul said, no, I press on toward the goal to win. There is a call to, to go forward, to, to win. He's talking about being called heavenward. He's talking about his divine destiny, a heavenly calling. Friends like Paul, you and I have a divine destiny. If you are part of the family of God, you have a divine destiny. Your destiny is in God. We begin with God and we end with God. Amen. He is our Alpha and Omega. Amen. He is the beginning and the end. And so there are three things I want to share with you about our divine destiny this morning. First of all, you are destined to be a son of God. Amen? Amen? You are destined to be a son of God. God's desire is for you to be his son. Not just a, you know, friends, it's not a gender, you know, because you could be a, a woman right now. It is, is a position in Christ that you are not a slave without any inheritance, but you are a son in the family of God. God's destiny for us, he, what he wants for us is that we become a part of the family of God to become sons. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 to 6 says this. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through, his, through Jesus Christ. In accordance with his pleasure and will. To the praise of his glorious grace which he has freely given us in the one he loves. Now, here's another verse in verse 11 to 12, uh, Ephesians 1. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. In order that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. Now, as we meditate on that passage, we find that it is God's will and pleasure that you become a son of God. That's what pleases Him. That's His desire. Not just a believer of Christ. Not just a, a, uh, an attender of a church. He wants us to be a son. Are you hearing me? A son that grows up and matures and belongs to a family. Not a disconnected believer who just attends. When you're a son, you belong to a relationship. A son is a relationship. You belong to a family. There is a father. Uh, and there are, there are siblings, brothers and sisters in the Lord. See, you have been chosen to be a son, to grow up and mature, that you might bring praises to him. You were redeemed by the blood of Jesus who died for you so that you become a son of God. Friends, our lives have no meaning until we understand what it means to be a son of God. It has no meaning. If we don't understand what 
what is being a son of God. You see, Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 to 27, Paul said this, You are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. So in other words, we have put him on. It's everything. All over us is Christ. The Bible tells me that as a son of God, I no longer live for myself, but Christ who lives through me. And as you grow and mature as a son or daughter of God, you carry with you the government and his anointing of God. You become a carrier of that spiritual legacy. And as a child of God, he deposited into you his nature and his ability. But you need, you and I need to walk in that destiny as a legacy carrier. Amen? Tell the person beside you, be a legacy carrier. Let's stop trying to be a child of the world and be influenced by the world. You and I are world changers. Amen? We are world changers. We carry the legacy of God. We carry the anointing of God. We carry the glory of God. So we are the legacy carriers and we, we bring to the earth what is in heaven. Amen? That is how God wants to expand. Stop running away from God and trying to do things on our own. The Bible says, you are royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. It's time to walk in our divine destiny and stand firm on who we are. You are not who you think you are. You are who God says you are, what His Word says you are. You are a son or a, or a daughter of God. You take orders from the King of Kings. Quit allowing the world to dictate who you are and what you can or cannot do. You are who he says you are. You have what he says you have. You can do what he says you can do. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. Everywhere you go, act like a son of God. I mean, at home, you should be a son of God. You know, you, you reflect him. Even at home. You are a child of God. You're a son of God. You do things uh, in, the, in the proper way. You establish correct relationships with family, whether it's a husband or wife or parents or children. You are a son of God. At work, you are a son of God. You do your best. You, 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 you do things with righteousness and you deal with the right things. And at, at, in your business, you, you deal uh, with righteousness and, and you do things that is right. You make an impact in our world, in your school. You excel. You do your best and you become an example to other students. In the community, you're there to serve and to help because you are a son of God. Amen? In these last days, God is raising up sons as legacy carriers are walking in their destiny to make a difference in this world. The church is powerful when the believers are walking in their divine destiny. When they walk in the calling and gifting that God created them to be. When the administrators will administer, when the preachers will preach, the teachers will teach. You know what I'm talking about. Whatever gift that God has given you, when, when the prophetic will begin to prophesy, the worshipers will worship. I mean, stop trying to be something else that God did not gift us to be or equipped us to be. Work in the giftings and the talents that God has given us. Be a son of God. Amen? Amen? The second thing is that you are destined to succeed. Amen. 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 Tell the person beside you, look them in the eye and say, you are destined to succeed. I declare that in your life. Amen. 1 Samuel 18, 14 says this. In everything he did, he had great success because the Lord was with him. That is our verse as champion life. That is what the Lord has shown us when we came up with the name of champion life. It's 
1 Samuel 18, 14, in everything he did, he had great success. It's talking about David. That even though David uh, was just a shepherd boy, he was not even chosen because of his height or his, his looks or his appearance or, or his experience. He was chosen because of who he is. God saw him, his heart, after God's own heart. And David, without all of the experiences, without any of his abilities, he became successful because the Lord was with him. And you know that word, everything he did, was in line with the will of God for his life. In other words, he had great success, quote and unquote, in everything he did. Meaning, it's not everything that you do in life you will have success. No, it's in everything that he did that was in the will of God. He had great success because the Lord was with him. When God is with you, who can be against you? Amen. Amen. And so that's the way David lived his life. You will not succeed just doing whatever you want to do in life. You need to be aligned to God. As a child of God, the Lord enables you to succeed in everything you do. Galatians chapter 3 verse 29 says, If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. That's why you will succeed because you are an heir according to the promise of God. You are an heir to him. You are destined to succeed because he already made that promise. Amen? From the beginning, God had a higher purpose for us. He created man to have dominion over the earth. But because of sin, we have lost that authority. But when Jesus came, he restored that authority and power through his death and resurrection. He came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And therefore today, you have authority and power. Amen. Praise God. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 to 5 says this. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that he overcame the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. See, friends, as a child of God, you are an overcomer. You are more than a conqueror. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The world will increasingly become fearful because of the economic shaking and all the things that will happen, the news around us. People are anxious because of financial crisis. They're not able to, to get their desires and they will continue to struggle in their salaries, in their position, in their job. Our society is emphasizing on positions and possessions, but they will be frustrated with the circumstances. But you are a child of God. You have the favor of God. 2018 will be the best for you because you're walking under an open heaven, under the favor of God. You do not have to fear what is ahead because God is with you. Amen. Amen. He gives you the wisdom and enables you to take over with influence. That's the way God works in our lives. Why? Because of him in our life. You're destined to succeed. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. God give you strength for this coming year. May God give you that strength to overcome every challenge that you face. That whenever you have troubles, that you can uh, speak that word and say, I can do it through Christ who strengthens me. And no matter what trials I face, no matter what issues I face, no matter what challenges I face, I can overcome because I am more than a conqueror in God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. And thirdly, you are destined to prosper. Did you hear that? Amen. You are destined to prosper. Psalm 128 verse 1 to 2 says, Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in His ways. You will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. Amen. Now remember that. 
that the blessing and prosperity will be yours because of the first part. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Are you hearing me? You can't claim this other part <laughs> when we don't have the first part. And the first part is having the fear of the Lord. When we have the fear of the Lord, he says, you're blessed. When you have that respect and honor, when you have that, when you have that uh, fear of God in your life, then you are blessed. You can't help to be blessed because you're already blessed. And you're walking in his ways because you're, and you're walking in his ways. You will be able to reap what you are sowing. You will eat the fruit of your labor. Amen. Amen. And blessing and prosperity will be yours. As a child of God and you walk in his ways, blessings and prosperity will be yours. You don't have to worry about what's going to be happening in 2018. Just remember that part. Have the fear of God and walk in his ways. Amen? That's all you need to do. Think about it every day. I need to fear the Lord and walk in his ways. And all the rest will come into place. Amen? Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. Just remember this. Moses had to remind the nation of Israel. Remember the Lord your God. For it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. And so confirms the covenant which he swore to your forefathers as it is today. Friends, it's easy to forget sometimes. When things are already going well. And that's the reason why uh, Moses had to remind the nation of Israel. Because knowing people. He knew that someday they were going to forget. And surely they did. You will forget that God has blessed you. That God has prospered you. That in the beginning of the year, you are declaring it and you are walking with God. You are fearing the Lord. And somewhere along the way, we get sidetracked and we forget that it is God who gave us the ability to produce that wealth. And it's time for us to be able to reevaluate uh, re our lives and to remember that it is God who gives us this prosperity. So you're destined to prosper when you're walking in His ways. When you walk in your destiny, you have the confidence to produce results. Your prosperity confirms His covenant. Do you know that? That when you're prospering, it is actually just a, a confirmation. That's all. He, God is not surprised that you're prospering. God is not uh, surprised that you are blessed. No, that was already part of His covenant. That's just a confirmation. When you say, oh, yeah, I'm blessed, and, he's, and God says, what else is new? I know that. I already made that promise 2,000 years ago, way before to your forefathers. I already made that covenant. And when you became, uh, uh, when you belong to Christ, you became a seed of Abraham, and all the blessings from Moses to Abraham is with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Friends, he delights in the prosperity of his servants and, and, and please hear me well, it's not only money. Prosperity, it's not only money, but it includes money. So don't ever forget that. You know, it, it, it includes money. But to prosper really means to be complete, to be whole, lacking nothing. When you're prospering, you lack nothing. You have everything you need. And sometimes you don't even money for that because you have the favor of God. When you have the favor of God, you don't even need the money. You're just blessed. Amen? And that's what we need to do to be able to please God in this way. So friends, so you prosper in every area of your life. That is your destiny. Apostle John said, I pray above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Amen? And so as we think about our divine destiny, how do we walk in our destiny very simply this you are not governed by the principles of this world you're governed by the kingdom of God and so here's what we need to be Colossians 3 verse 1 to 3 says this since then you have been raised with Christ set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God set your mind on things above not on earthly things 
For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. So here's what Paul is saying to summarize. He's saying, since we have been raised with Christ, we are now seated with him in the heavenly realms. We need to focus our hearts and minds to God. Our priorities must change. Amen? We, we don't pursue the earthly things anymore because we have a higher purpose. Our lives are no longer ours but Christ living through us. We reflect and represent Christ in everything we do. And so that's why in this coming 2018, begin, your, you begin to, to change the priorities that you have. If, that, if, if the Lord was not your first priority in 2017, make Him your first priority this year. If studying the Word and, 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 and being a part of a, a life group community and being part of the church, if that was not your priority, make it a priority this year. Begin to change something. All right? And that is you begin to put Him for set your minds and your, and your heart. So in other words, you want to set it. You know when you set sail, you focus and you set it in such a way that it's already going that way. When you set your thermostat, that's it. It doesn't change. In the same way, when you set yourself, you set your heart and your mind on things above, what you're saying is you're focusing on God. Putting your priority. We don't pursue anymore those other things. Our lives are no longer like that. We are now sons of God. We reflect and we rep represent Him in everything we do. So as we prepare for the new year, let us set godly goals and objectives. For your family, for yourself, set godly goals. Let us align our priorities with the will of God. Today you have heard the word, and when you act upon that word, it will come to pass. It's time to walk in your divine destiny. You don't allow the devil to distract you and take you away from the blessing of God in your life. From your inheritance. You need to take authority. You may be out of a job, but you are not out of God who provides. You may have some issues and problems and challenges, but you can take authority over these. Because you are seated with Christ in the heavenly realms. You have the power to overcome. Amen? Today... Make a decision to walk in your divine destiny. Are you with me? Yeah. Let me close with this thought. I, I thought this was a really good um, thing that, that I found. And um, let's just read it. It's, it's talking about the coming year. And I hope that this will encourage you. It says, welcome on board. You know, have you taken a plane before? Ladies and gentlemen, this is Captain Jesus. Thank you for choosing Salvation Airlines. We have taken off to January 2018 airport. The duration of this flight is 365 days. We shall be cruising at accountable blessings per day and at million miles above sorrow level. The weather may be cloudy, but grace is sufficient. There may be some turbulence, but divine intervention is certain. The Prince of Peace will speak peace be still to your storms. The angels are our cabin crew. They will serve to help supply all your needs according to His riches in glory. You shall not lack anything good. Our menu includes peace, grace, mercy, favor, sound health, success, and prosperity. Amazingly, they are all free courtesy of Captain Jesus. Note that this is a no weeping, no mourning flight. Please fasten your prayer belt. You and all members of your family will land safely. For more information about your safety on board, please always contact your safety manual, the Bible, on a daily basis. For any questions, the Holy Spirit shall give you answers anytime. Enjoy your flight. There shall be no losses. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Are you on board that flight? Amen. Let us pray. Let's stand and we'll pray together. Hallelujah.